Hi and welcome. Short notice before we get started, this video is part of a comprehensive GitHub Actions course that I have available on Udemy. The link with a big discount is in the description of this video. And if you don't want to miss any upcoming videos or courses that I publish, make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow the videos. we have been running all our jobs and workflows in Ubuntu runners, but GitHub Actions offers different types of workflow runners and that's what we're going to explore in this lecture. We can think of runners as simply virtual servers, so VMs that execute jobs from workflows. We can either use the GitHub hosted runners and here I put standard between parentheses because there are both standard GitHub hosted runners as well as large GitHub hosted runners. We will keep this discussion focused on the standard ones, but we could also host the runners ourselves and then simply inform GitHub to run the jobs, to run the workflows in our self-hosted runners. As we already discussed, GitHub Hosted offers Windows and Ubuntu as well as Mac options. And for Windows and Ubuntu, the resources that are available are as follows. We have two cores, seven gigabytes of memory of RAM and 14 gigabytes of storage. And for the Mac version, we have three cores, 14 gigabytes of RAM and 14 gigabytes of storage. Now, these numbers may change slightly. I'm aware that there is a, a more recent beta version of a Mac 13 runner, which has four cores. Uh, so these are likely to change as time progresses. Important thing is that we are roughly aware of how much resources are available for us at any point in time. If you want to know the exact numbers, then GitHub offers this information in its documentation. GitHub hosted runners are a managed service and this means that we don't need to take care of security updates, patching or anything like that. GitHub will take care of the infrastructure for us and a VM is scoped to a job when we use GitHub hosted runners. So jobs or rather steps share the same VM, but the jobs don't. By default, each job receives a clean VM instance. And this is very important for us to know because if we have jobs that are dependent on each other, even though they are dependent, even though they are waiting for a completion of our previous job, when that specific job starts, it will start in a clean VM instance. Self-hosted runners, on the other hand, allow us to run workflows on pretty much any infrastructure of our choice. There are some limitations, and if you're interested, you can check the documentation from GitHub. It provides all the details there, but this is a little bit more complex, so we're not gonna enter into the details here now. And we have full control over the VM infrastructure. That also means that we have to take care of patching, security updates, and other operations tasks. GitHub is not gonna do anything of this management related tasks because GitHub is not responsible for our self-hosted runners. We can add self-hosted runners at the repository, at the organization, or at the enterprise level, if you have GitHub Enterprise. And for self-hosted runners, jobs do not necessarily have to run on clean instances. That This would then mean that we can run jobs on runners that already have some data. And these kind of assumptions could possibly lead us to writing jobs differently than we would when we are using GitHub hosted runners. So a little tip here for you, always keep in mind the VM resources. It's very common here for example, if we are executing uh, unit tests that are passing on our machine, but suddenly we are running into some resource exhaustion, it's probably because our machine is, is more powerful than the resources that are available here. So while things are working fine in our machine, when we push this and we run tests on ACI CD pipeline, then we end up stumbling upon the resource limitations of our GitHub hosted VM. And a little but very important warning, do not use self-hosted runners in public repositories. That's for a very simple reason, that public repositories are more susceptible to attempts of attacks. And if you use self-hosted runners, then if there is any, any security breach, any security issue, then you could potentially expose your entire infrastructure and you definitely don't want to do that. So if you're working in public repositories, Stay away from self-hosted runners as much as possible and use the provided GitHub hosted runners. Let's now take a short break and come back in the next practical exercise where we are going to see the GitHub hosted runners in practice in our workflows.
let's now explore how we can use different runners in our workflows. We will start by under here, the .github forward slash workflows folder. We're going to create a new YAML file. This is going to be called workflow runners .yaml. And then here we will have once again name. That's just going to be 03 workflow runners. And this is going to run to begin with on push. And now we will specify our jobs. The first job, we're going to call this Ubuntu runner or rather Ubuntu echo maybe. And this runs on Ubuntu latest. We're going to have a single step here and this is going to be called show OS. This is going to execute a bash script. It's going to be a multi-line script. That's why I'm putting this vertical bar here so that I can write a single bash script in multiple lines. This is YAML syntax. And it's very good to know because it's fairly common to have multiple lines that we want to execute. So we're going to have echo. This job is running on an Ubuntu runner. And then for us to access the, the operating system where we are running this job, we can simply say runner OS. And here we can access the environment variable dollar sign runner OS, right? So in this runner OS variable here, it stores the environment where we are running and this is going to print Ubuntu. So let's now save this and let's start with this and let's see what this outputs in our GitHub workflows or GitHub actions page. Let's add it and we're going to commit with whatever message you would like to include. Once this is committed, let's push this and then go switch to the GitHub actions page. Here in our GitHub Actions page, if you refresh the page and you have it open, right? So um, if you refresh it, you should be able to see now the new run here. It was triggered on push and under the Actions tab here, we have our new workflow and then it has all the runs. Once we click here and click on Ubuntu Echo and then Show OS, we will see that it's printing that the run operating system is Linux. Let's now try to do the same thing for Windows. And I would like to show you a different way that we can edit this file instead of having to go back to the IDE. If you would like to make small changes, you can simply click here or access the file by browsing it here in code. And then you can simply edit the file online. The editor here in GitHub Actions so on the browser here, it's a very powerful one. It has also the, the same validations that we have when we are executing this in Visual Studio Code. So if we were to write something incorrect here, let's just say Windows Echo, and you see that it already starts saying that it requires, the job requires either runs on or uses, right? So it has this validation. It's also very useful for us to use it in the browser. It has quite a few capabilities to help us write a valid, a valid workflow file. So it's gonna run on Windows latest and it's gonna have again, a single step here. This is going to be the same thing, name show OS, and it's gonna run the exact same thing that we have here. Now, I'm gonna save it like this. I know that this is not going to work to begin with, but I will save it like this and I wanna show you what happens. Let's just change the runner here from, from Ubuntu to Windows and we're gonna leave it as it is. Let's commit the changes. We're gonna say add job running on Windows and now we can commit this. We're gonna commit directly to the main branch, which means a new run is gonna be triggered here. And once we click here, we have these two jobs, Ubuntu Echo and Windows Echo. Once we click on Windows Echo, let's just wait a little bit. You see that we already have a requested label here, Windows Latest. Let's just expand this again. So in the operating system, we have Microsoft Windows Server. And if we click here on Show OS, we will see that, well, it's not really outputting anything, even though we are actually running on a Windows Server, right? So um, the problem here is that we have a different syntax for accessing environment variables whenever we are on Windows, right? So the syntax that we wrote here under workflows and the um, 03 file, it is not a valid syntax for accessing environment variables in, a, in the default shell that is provided in a Windows server. So if we were to edit this file and simply tell GitHub Actions to run this in a shell, which is bash, then this syntax will become valid and it will output Windows here. So if we want to have a bit more portability and change the runner, you have to keep in mind that, that there might be adjustments necessary here, depending on how you have written your scripts, or you might have to inform GitHub Actions that it has to use a bash shell so that your scripts are executed successfully. Let's commit the changes here. 
once we commit the changes then we should be able to see the new run here triggered and we should be able to actually see the output correctly on the screen. After the run is completed, you can click here and now you will see that it correctly outputs that the runner operating system is Windows. Now, if you're curious to understand how do we know that Bash is available? Well, if we come here and we have the runner image, then you will see that there is a link here called include, included software. And if we click here to follow the link, then we are gonna have everything that is included in this Windows runner. It is the same thing for Linux. If we were to come back here to GitHub Actions and then click on Ubuntu Echo, we have the runner image under setup job and then it has the link for the included software and it has a lot of stuff included. So um, this is also very useful to know which kind of tools, which kind of runtimes, which kind of packages are available. Anything that you might consider, um, do I have to install it or not? Is it already there? Well, it's faster if you don't need to install it, right? So it's always good to check this um, for any, any tool that you might be thinking about using in your workflows. But let's go back here to the Windows Server 1. And if we look under language and runtime, we will find bash 5.2.15, right? So this is telling us basically that bash is available and we can use the shell bash in Windows. That's it for this practical exercise. There is no need for us to explore anything further here. As you also know, there is a Mac latest available. So if we were to run on Mac here, we could actually give it a try if you want to. Let's simply edit it here. And let's now copy the whole thing. And instead of having Windows, we're gonna have Mac. And then this is gonna run on Mac OS latest. And this, we do not need to inform the shell anymore so on a mac os runner let's now save this and in our workflows on our actions page then we should also be able to see the mac os echo it is setting up mac os latest and here i believe this is the version 12 the 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 system um mac os 12. let's have a look if we click here then exactly that's what we get so 12.7 just for you to keep in mind which operating system it's using it's not always the latest version and here we can also access it as, as we access in a, in a bash shell, we can access the environment variables with a dollar sign. But that's it for now. Let's come back to the workflow file here. We can click here to see the workflow file. Let's edit this. And instead of having on push, we're gonna change this to workflow dispatch so that we don't trigger this workflow whenever we commit changes, rather whenever we push changes, right? So workflow runners. And once we commit the changes, we shouldn't see anything new here on the action step. It should be everything clean. That's it for now. Let's take a short break and come back in the next lecture.